Hello, I'm Dr. Scott Wadier. And I'm Tommy Welling, and you're listening to the Fasting for Life podcast. This podcast is about using fasting as a tool to regain your health, achieve ultimate wellness, and live the life you truly deserve. Each episode is a short conversation on a single topic with immediate actionable steps. We cover everything from fat loss and health and wellness to the science of lifestyle design. We started Fasting for Life because of how fasting has transformed our lives, and we hope to share the tools that we have learned along the way. Hey, everyone. Wanted to hop on real quick before we get into today's episode and let everyone know that the next seven-day fasting lifestyle challenge registration link is live. You can go to the show notes, click the link for more details, or you can go to www.the fastingforlife.com forward slash live. Wanted to speak directly to you if you've been listening to the podcast, maybe you're new and just getting started, or maybe you've been fasting for a while and really trying to adopt that lifestyle and the scale just won't move beyond that two to four, three to five pounds each week, or maybe you feel like you've hit that dreaded weight loss plateau, or maybe the hunger, or as my wife likes to say, the hangriness has snuck up and bit you on the backside, and you just can't seem to get away from those cravings, or the consistency of your fasting schedule just isn't allowing you to get back on track if you've fallen by the wayside. This seven-day lifestyle challenge is exactly for you. It's coming up in the near future. Please don't miss out on this opportunity. We are super excited to be leveling up this experience and leaving that diet baggage behind, giving you the confidence and the habits to build that long-term weight loss and fasting lifestyle success. Go to the show notes. You can click the link or www.thefastingforlife.com forward slash live. We will hope to see you on the inside. And now to today's episode. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Fasting for Life podcast. My name is Dr. Scott Wadier, and I'm here, as always, with my good friend and colleague, Tommy Welling. Good afternoon to you, sir. Hey, Scott. How are you? Doing fantastic, my friend. As always, excited for today's episode. Want to welcome all of you new listeners in. If you are new to the Fasting for Life podcast or Tommy and I, please go back and listen to the first couple of episodes. Don't worry, about 30 minutes or less, maybe 40 minutes total. You'll get a big picture of who we are, why we do this, a little bit about our journey uh, and why we keep you know recording episodes and continuing to help people adopt a fasting lifestyle. So I want to welcome yeah. all of y'all in. Go back, check it out if you'd like. And then for all of you OGs, you long-term listeners, mm-hmm. thank you for continuing to give us the feedback and the encouragement that we need to continue to bring you content each and every yes. week. Thank if you, you want to drop a review, we prefer the five-star kind, of course. That tells the podcasting gods wherever get you get your podcast that we are delivering value and we don't plan on going anywhere. So welcome in everybody to today's episode. We are going to be having, I think a fun conversation today, Tommy, about some fasting frustrations, but then also what we term that your fasting identity and how those things are connected and why fasting can be so simple, but not easy to sustain. Just like any other, dare I say the word? No, don't say it. Diet. Oh, man. And how we're going to disassociate from that and give you some action steps that you can take today to continue your fasting journey. We're also going to welcome you into the community group on Facebook. It is a place where you can come and break the first two rules of the Fasting for Life podcast and the Fasting Lifestyle, which is don't talk about fasting if you're new to fasting. First two rules, don't talk about fasting. Well, guess what? This group, we've created it. It is moderated by us and our coaches. It is a cool Mm -hmm. place, positive encouragement, accountability. Come get your questions answered. We're going to invite you in as well. The link is in the show notes. All right, Tommy, all that's out of the way. Setting the stage here for the conversation of the fasting frustrations and your fasting identity. I want to open it up with this concept and this kind of storyline of the outside world, the forces at bay, the struggle of long-term sustainability when it comes to weight loss, which then ends mm. up relating directly to our health. And yeah. we talk a lot about these studies that have come out, You know, the 12% of us are metabolically flexible, 5% of people 
you know, can maintain the weight loss that they've had for a span of two years. So that sustainability sure. long-term result piece. So we're yeah. not consistently on this dieting roller coaster, right? You're on, you're off, you're on, you're off kind of stuff. Yeah. So the outside stuff, the world, social, mm. family, friends, all of that plays a big part in our success when we feel if it's truly part of your identity, then you're able to defend that stuff off a lot better. Wow. Yeah. You know what? Even backing it up from there, what is at the core of your health identity? Is it that I'm identifying as a dieter because I've dieted so many times in the past or I've been doing it since I was a kid or maybe a teenager or a young adult that that feels like who I am. So I'm, I've almost doomed myself motivationally and psychologically before I even, regardless of how effective fasting is going to be, whether I have a lot of weight to lose or just a little bit, or I'm trying to sustain my results. If I've already identified myself as a long-term dieter, then I might be expecting the failure point or the time when I stop this because it's just another one of the things that I put into place rather than who I am. Yeah, the expectation is not met by a certain timeline or reality of your experience. Yeah. So specifically looking at the big picture, let's say you've got 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds to lose. You've lost it and you've gained it back. There's a couple of things here that I wanna unpack. One on the family and social side, but then also on the big picture, like overwhelm side. So if you've got the weight mm -hmm. to lose and taking what you just said and expounding on it, in that case, if you're looking at the gap between the end goal of where you want to be and how you're mm -hmm. going to get there and fasting is your vehicle, you need to learn how to drive the fasting car. Okay. Yeah. And the first thing you can do is if you're looking at this and you're getting back air quotes on track and you're like, all right, this is going to be my new plan. It's fasting. Why is it fasting? Well, fasting has all these additional benefits. It puts me in a deficit right off the bat. You know, I mm -hmm. feel better. I sleep better. You've had some wins. But the frustration of the big picture or the stop and go, the hyper focus on the scale, right? Yeah, or the yeah. under consuming nutrient dense foods and over fasting or you're over consuming and under fasting and you just can't put all the pieces together. We really need to hone in and narrow our focus and look at just the next few decisions that we're going to be making and then implement something that we like to talk about, which is the five second rule which is something that we came across from a Mel Robbins talk yeah. where we need to get at that feeling in the moment of the action you're about to take mm. and be like, okay, I'm not a bad person because I do X, Y, or Z. You have a habit of doing X, Y, or Z. Right. 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 Same thing about yeah. the whole chronic diet or label or, wow. or un, you know, you've been at a 800 calorie deficit for 20 years and you're 40 pounds yeah. overweight. Like, sure. The frustration builds. So the first thing to free yourself from the frustration of fasting, wow, that was a lot of alliteration there, <laughs> is to narrow your focus. And yeah. in that moment, what is that feeling? And then use the five second rule. Wow. And you know, the cool thing is if you you're finding yourself telling yourself that I need to get back on track, well, going back to that moment where you got off track is exactly where that five second rule can come into play. And what it does is it helps remove the indecision point that comes from when we have a strong feeling and then we take a more automatic action that actually helps make us feel better in that moment. So maybe it's like when I'm bored or stressed or something else like that. And then all of a sudden I find myself grazing in the pantry. Well, wasn't I supposed to be on a fast right here? Right. And so like that's a mistake in the moment. But if I can recognize the fact that, wait a minute, I'm doing something that I didn't want to do and implement that five, four, three, two, one. That gives me just a few seconds to like mentally separate myself from the moment, from the feeling. And now I can regain my mental bearings and make an actual decision rather than just an automatic behavior. Yeah, right. you've interrupted that pattern. So we're going to come back to that and how it relates to the core values or the identity of lifestyle or of what you've been doing that hasn't been able to turn into a lifestyle. Yeah. But knowing those triggers or those things that pull you off track is super Ooh. powerful. And you mentioned it, the halt BS. So hungry, angry, lonely, tired, bored, stressed. And I don't know if anybody else out there can relate to this. You just spent $200, maybe more nowadays on groceries. You have all this wonderful mm -hmm. food in your kitchen and it's like, ah, oh, we're going to DoorDash. Right. <laughs> what? 
Why? We've all yeah, done it. Do like, that? why? Yeah. What is that feeling in the moment? So five, four, three, two, one, set a timer, 10, 15 minutes, go for a walk, get out of the situation. And most likely you're not going to go back to it. And if that continues to happen, then have a plan for what you're going to do moving forward. Like if this happens, then I'm going to do this instead. And just that five, four, three, two, one should give you that ability to kind of stop the bus and be like, oh, hold on, let me get off this bus. I know I'm going in the same direction. Right. Let me just take a breath here and identify what's going on. And that whole BS method is really cool. Each one of those times when we get off track, that can start to sink in to the identity piece too. Because just like you said earlier, you're not someone who always gets off track. You're not a get off tracker. You have a history, especially a recent history of going off track. But each time that I'm able to catch myself a little quicker, a little quicker in the process, then that means that I can start to override those things and start to shift the identity too, right? Yeah. And a lot of our identity when it comes to weight starts at a very young age. So it's mm -hmm. the chronic obsession with the scale. It's the, the I have a sugar addictions comments, mm -hmm. all of the stuff that falls in that category. Label. Well, labels, right? So when we're taking this and putting this into like an identity, I want to use the example of vegetarian or a vegan situation, right? Okay. I'm going to tell a little yeah. story here in just a second. But when we're looking at this, that constant fluctuation of putting your focus on the wrong things or the things that haven't served you well is mm -hmm. where you get stuck. So I always joke around with my kids, they're too young to know what the eye of Sauron is, but if it's from the Lord of the Rings, you know that it's the eye that sees everything across yeah. all the realms, right? And my yeah. daughter would be like, daddy, how did you know that? I'm like, cause I'm you and I've done that before and I know right. you're fibbing. You don't know that I'm always listening and watching, okay? Right. So I just joke, well, <laughs> it's magic. And she's like, what do you mean it's magic? I'm like, well, the eye of Sauron is on you, okay? I'm focused on you making sure that you're not going to do X, Y, or Z, right? So right. you're focusing on those things that haven't served your identity. And a lot of it comes from societal, cultural constructs. Like the mm -hmm. struggle bus, the episodes that we've done on that big research article that came out about why the sustainability is so difficult was looking at the external forces the continuous monitoring, the self-monitoring, the goal setting, the goal mm -hmm. hitting, all of that stuff. And there's intrinsic and extrinsic factors that go with all of those things. But if we're gonna look at this and make it sustainable, then what is it that we want to track? What is it that serves us in our identity to be able to consistently make the right decision? We're not saying perfection, but maybe 60 right. to 70 or 80% of the time, which is gonna get you the long-term wins. Wow. Yeah. And what do we need to do in order to actually make that happen and like keep the momentum going? Well, we need to find those little pieces of the puzzle that can remove us from the situation when we're about to quote unquote, get off track. And then we also need to find those ways to keep winning in those, those even small ways. And we need to find ways to kind of measure the progress that aren't just necessarily giving us all the negative feedback all the time, right? Like that's why we talk about some of the things that are not on the scale and why those things matter, even though they're oftentimes yeah. not talked about. Yeah, non-scale victories. Like what's yeah. the journey look like, right? What yeah. motivates you to keep taking the, the mini actions? So I wanna use this example of a potential situation to highlight if you are a person that continually says yes to the external, meaning, Hey, this is going on this weekend. Hey, it's summertime up at the lake. Hey, it's mm. come have drinks with me. Hey, I want to go here. Hey, this popped up or this opportunity. Yeah. You probably have a yes problem. And all of the people that love you and appreciate you in your close circle are not doing it on purpose, but they also don't know that your goal is to obtain this level of health with this identity six months from now, because mm -hmm. you want to prevent insert certain disease. You don't want to end up like a family member that's had a traumatic experience, you know, with health or you want to, you know, get off your medications and lose the weight and be healthy. Because if we look yeah. around, up to 60% of the people are trying to lose weight at any given time, but 75% of the population is overweight or obese. It's like, okay, well, you can't do what they're doing to get the same result, but then they don't know that. So communicating yeah. that is difficult in the beginning. It's really just keeping to yourself and figuring out how to defend those things, right? So I want to set this stage in, if that is you, where you continually get pulled in a ton of different directions. Yeah. And let's say... You get a call that says, hey, we're doing this, or you're the mom or dad that something's changed, right? That means mm. the plan has changed. The mm. external plan has changed for some reason. Right. 
But that doesn't mean that your plan has changed. Mm. The plan has changed. These yeah. people over here are deciding to do this thing this way from some external force. But yeah. that doesn't mean that your plan, the plan that you set out with the day, I'm not going to DoorDash. I'm going to eat the food I bought at home. I'm not right. going to stop at Chick-fil-A. I'm going to go home and make the steak. I'm going to fast today and stick to my 24-hour timer and not break my fast early or graze mm -hmm. off my kids' plates or get even overwhelmed though I got a by text the fact message. that even though yeah. I got a message or stress yeah. happened or something, the plan changed. Your plan did not. Wow. And you might identify as a people pleaser. It can be really easy if you identify as such. You don't yeah. want to hurt people's feelings, right? And then you're taking these invitation or a little bit of pressure coming from the outside. And now I'm internalizing it. I'm saying, well, I don't want to disappoint. I don't want to frustrate, right? So let me go ahead and, and go along with that. All of a sudden, my priorities have shifted in that moment from my own long-term health to pleasing this outside party. But I add up enough of those, I'm not hitting that 60, 70, 80% success at that point. My momentum is going the other way, which is leading me away from the goals that are so important to me. Yeah. And we had a story of someone once who was in the challenges in the coaching group and he he was like, yeah, you know, I just can't seem to get traction. I'm on, I'm off, you mm -hmm. know? And I said, okay, describe what happens when you're off. So he told me, you know, owns a retirement home and has like 10 or 12 people. He's the chef, his wife's the front, you know, management person. They're caring people, they're empathetic people. They're in home health, nursing, their whole careers. And he's like, I'm in the kitchen. I'm like, oh, so it must be the food you're around. He's like, no, I don't eat that food. It's after we're done. My wife and I, I want to take her to dinner. So we go to the local place around the corner. It's like an all-you-can-eat place for $21.99. It's like a golden corral or something. Right, yeah. <laughs> He's like, man, I just love the steak and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, stop. Right. I, honestly, 100% honesty. Do you really think it's the golden corral, like $18.99 steak <laughs> that's driving this action continually? He's like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, okay, well, why do you go to Golden Crab? Well, I want to take my wife out. And I was like, okay, hold on. So it's the experience and the connection with her that matters. Yeah. He's like, oh. So I was like, okay, here's what you're going to do. You're going to go order your favorite takeout. You're going to pick it up and you're going to go somewhere to a park or a beach or a bridge or a somewhere that you guys enjoy to go. And you're going to eat together and create that experience. Mm -hmm. So the identity piece is, okay, People, your friends, your family, your external, they want you. They want the connection. They want the experience. The problem is it happens to be around their habits, their food, and their ideas. Yeah. So <laughs> here's an example. You're a vegan or a vegetarian, a pescatarian, something, right? And you're going to an event and you've been told mm -hmm. by the people putting on the event, a birthday party, a wedding, whatever, that they have a, the chef is ready for you. They're going to prep you right. yep. a meal that fits your identity and your lifestyle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause Tommy, you mentioned it was like, I want to make sure you say what you said when we were talking about this earlier. So I'm hopefully going to lead it there right now. Okay. <laughs> so you show up, you're excited. You're like, great. I'm going to be taken care of. I'm going to have a meal. It's already set. And you show up and for whatever reason, the ball was dropped and they don't have the ability to make something for you other than like a bowl of kale. And you're like, well, I don't want kale. Okay. Right. So if they only had steak and beef products and things, vegetarian vegan things that you couldn't consume. They only had non-acceptable things to you. Would you yeah. sit down and just eat a 16 ounce ribeye at that point? Would you break your core identity as that individual and just start eating meat again because there's no food for you? The yeah. answer is no, absolutely not. You would not do that because it's part of your identity and you have morals and values and whatever else goes into that decision. And you wouldn't just break that because the plan has changed. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the difference between, am I using fasting as just another diet tool or am I a faster? Because if I am going to use a vegetarian diet as a weight loss tool or something else, then I'm willing to break it. I'm willing to break from that at any given point, if temptation or an option comes in, that's a higher priority in that moment. But if that's who I am at my core, if that's my identity, then that takes time to shift into that identity. But at the same time, when that's who I am, I'm not going to walk into an external situation and then all of a sudden just drop it. 
I'm not going to leave it at the doorstep, right? So it's like, that's why the first two rules of fasting are don't talk about fasting. It's like, you know, if you're the carnivore, the vegan, the keto, the non-drinker, like yeah. there's a whole comedic skit by Jim Gaffigan. It's like, drinking is the only thing you have to explain to people why you don't do it. You it's like, you don't drink? It. No. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Right? And it's like, you don't use mayo? Why? No one cares, right? right? No so, one grills you about it. Yeah. Right. There's that identity piece, right? So we want to encourage you that when it comes to fasting and you want to make this a lifestyle because you feel it is a sustainable solution for you, there's going to be a lot of bumps and bruises and some frustration along the way. The first half of this conversation today was talking about little things you can do to get those wins, right? Mm -hmm. And stay consistent. You don't need to just throw everything out because the plan has changed or the external situation has changed or someone has invited you to do something. Now, again, perfectionism is not obtainable. We want that consistency to say, okay, I can go and enjoy myself here, but then I have my boundaries here. And that just takes yeah. repetition to find that out for you. So if you're keto or low carb or predominantly protein, you're building muscle, whatever it is, whatever lifestyle that you are living, fasting fits. It fits as long as you are putting those targets in place that speak to that piece of the identity part of the journey, mm -hmm. which is why a lot of the weight loss stuff isn't sustainable. Who wants to do the lemon juice diet? That's yeah. not fun. Like you're not going to connect to that in a way. You just want to lose the dang weight. It's just a tool, right? To get you there. Yeah. It's just a tool. So we start to look at, at this as how is it going to serve me even when I'm beyond that weight loss goal or right. whatever else is like directly in front of me, or maybe it's a part of my blood work that I want to find some balance yep. for. And I feel like fasting is going to help me get there. Okay, well, great. But what am I going to be doing after that? Because if I can start to think about that, then it's going to start to make more sense how this can become more of my identity rather than a short-term tool. The short-term right. tools, those are just so easy to walk away from and so easy to just kind of drop off in the moment. And all of a sudden it feels like I can't get anywhere. With yeah. this. Well, there's no deeper attachment to it. Yeah. It's just like, ah, doc said I got to lose 20 pounds. Okay. Well, good luck. Right? right. That's not a lot of motivation for me. Yeah. He's overweight. He has no nutrition counts, yeah. no nutrition like yeah. training in the 10 years of school that he or she went to. Like, great. You told me I need to lose weight. Does that really move the needle for me? Mm -hmm. Probably not. So that's why we talk big picture that identity piece, the long play, but that can be overwhelming. So we want to make sure that we can narrow our focus and get down to the nitty gritty action steps of what we can do daily to get those consistent wins. So there's two things out of today's episode. One, you can come hang out in the community group, the links in the show notes. You can post your questions, post your struggles, ask for help, come in a like-minded community and get some of that encouragement that you might be missing in defending all of the potential pivots that come up or the things that might pull you off track. And then yeah. the second thing, Tommy, is if you've been off track and you want to get back on is getting our mini masterclass and our fast start guide, which is the six simple steps to get and put one meal a day fasting into your day to day life. If you've been struggling with IF or you just haven't been consistent, you go to the website, you can grab that and download that. You can also get that via email. If you sign up, come to the Facebook group and give us your email. We'll get that to you. Mm -hmm. And just a couple of ways you can engage today about starting to build those building blocks. But I just love that the realization that if it's not serving you, stop doing it. If it's working, keep mm -hmm. doing it. Like that's yeah. not complex. We get uh, interrupted. Our thought patterns get interrupted by all yeah. of the stuff around us. So really looking inward, five second rule, looking at those list of things that put you off track is an absolute great place to start. Yeah. Protect yourself from getting overwhelmed and doubting yep. yourself, especially when things are working. So yep. yeah, I absolutely love that. Keep it simple and start taking some action today. Yep. Don't wait. Take action yep. today. As Tommy always says, happy fasting and set those timers. Tommy, thanks absolutely. for the conversation today. We'll see you inside the group. Download the Fast Start Guide. Drop a five-star review. Appreciate all of you listening. Tommy, great conversation as always, and we'll talk soon. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. So, you've heard today's episode, and you may be wondering, where do I start? Head on over to thefastingforlife.com and sign up for our newsletter, where you'll receive fasting tips and strategies to maximize results and fit fasting into your day-to-day -day life. While you're there, download your free Fast Start Guide to get started today. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. 
Make sure to leave us a five-star review, and we'll be back next week with another episode of Fasting for Life.